What makes a story a story? Why do we look for truth in books? Could it be that our hunger for story and our thirst for meaning are somehow related? Or do these merely point to something else? What if purpose is just another word for adventure? How do you write a novel? Where do you start? How does an experienced author, someone like Robert Louis Stevenson, begin the process of telling a story as long as Treasure Island? Well, most people think a writer begins a novel on page one with something like, it was a dark and stormy night, and then puts down whatever comes to mind until he gets to page 400 and types out the end. That is not a very good way to approach writing a novel. So today, we're going to begin by looking at different types of novels and by asking the question, what kind of novel should I write? I'm Dan Schwabauer, and over the course of the next school year, I'm going to show you how to write a compelling adventure novel. We're going to start with answers to the questions I just asked. Today's lesson, The Heroic Quest. Most writers categorize novels by plot type, but they disagree about how many plots there actually are. Some say 50, some say 100 or 200 or even 1,000 plots. Others say that there are really only two types of novels, stories with an internal conflict and stories with an external conflict. Internal conflicts are character-driven. They have to do with someone who's dealing with say, the loss of a loved one. External conflicts are action-driven. They're about problems that come from outside the main character. That is, the hero's villain is a real villain, a real person, or a monster, or a force of nature, and not just an aspect of his own character. Well, this way of looking at plots is true, but it has never seemed very helpful to me in the creative process of crafting a story. It can be helpful when analyzing literature, when taking apart stories that have already been written, but it's not specific enough to give me direction when I'm trying to imagine a novel that doesn't exist yet. Ultimately, that's what we're going to do. We're going to imagine a story that doesn't exist yet, and then bring that story to life. To do that, we need more than two generic types of conflict. We need some broad story patterns or story types. The most helpful explanation of story types I know comes from science fiction writer James Gunn, who says there are actually three types of stories, three basic plots, not just two. The first is boy meets girl, the romance story. Think of Romeo and Juliet or love story or pretty much any Amish romance novel that has a lady with a bonnet on the cover. Love stories are primarily about whether or not the boy will get the girl, or vice versa. The second story type is The Man Who Learned Better, which is a character change story. Think of George Bailey at the end of It's a Wonderful Life as he stands on the bridge saying, Take me back, Clarence. I want to live again. Or perhaps the most famous character change story in the English language, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. For I draw nearer to the stone at which you point. Tell me. Are these the shadows of the things that will be? Or are they the shadows of the things that may be only? Ebenezer Scrooge! Am I that man who lay upon the bed? No, spirit, no. I'll not be the man I was. I'll not be the man I must have been but for this intercourse. 
Why show me this if it is all too late? Tell me I may sponge away the writing on this stone. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. No, no. no. The third type is the story of the brave little tailor, which is also called the heroic quest. This story type is based on the hero having to overcome a series of increasingly difficult obstacles in order to achieve the story goal. A good example of the heroic quest is the story of the labors of Hercules, who had to overcome the Nemean lion, a hydra, a hind, a boar, he had to capture the guardian of Hades, etc. These three story types, boy meets girl, the man who learned better, and the heroic quest, define the three basic things we all tend to expect from any and every story. That is, we expect three basic things from stories we like, the same three things found in these three story types. We expect the self-sacrifice and personal fulfillment that demonstrates true love. We expect and respect a change of character, the act of changing your mind and turning around to go the other direction, what we sometimes call repentance. And third, we expect resistance, something to achieve and conquer, a force to overcome that will prove the value of the other two. These are the wellsprings of meaning that make up what we think of as different story types. But in truth, most modern stories don't rely on just one of these three. A modern romance will be primarily about whether or not Hunky Hank gets a beautiful barb. But the other story types will also be present. Hank may have to undergo a dramatic character change in order to get Barb. And Barb may have to overcome a series of competitive other girls who are trying to win Hank's hand in marriage. Still, the driving force of the romance story has to do with whether or not Hank and Barb get together. The same principle is true of the modern character change story. Most character change stories employ a minor character as a love interest and a series of obstacles that stand in the way of the main character learning anything or changing at all. Well, this year we're going to use a combination of story types too, but our emphasis will be on the third one, the heroic quest. Why? Because most classic adventure stories are based on this story type, as are most fantasy and science fiction stories. Lord of the Rings and Star Wars are two really good examples. As I said before, the heroic quest basically means your protagonist, or main character, sets out to achieve some important story goal, but has to overcome a series of increasingly difficult obstacles in order to achieve it. This is the kind of story we're going to spend the next school year writing. Of course, in order to write a heroic quest, you really need a hero. So your first step is going to be creating the central character of your novel. Keep in mind that you don't have to know very much about your hero yet. You'll learn more about him, or her, as we progress through the course. The first thing you need to decide about your hero is his or her age. And I'm going to make this very easy by saying that unless you're at least 20 years old, your hero should be someone roughly your own age, say within two years either way. So if you're 15, your hero should be between 13 and 17. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, why do I have to write a heroic quest? Why do I have to have a boy or girl about my own age as my hero? I'm going to address those objections, but first, I want to demonstrate something by doing a little writing exercise. To do this, you need to take out a pen and a blank sheet of paper. For this exercise, you're going to write what's called a short, short story of one paragraph. You can write about anything you like, any genre, any style, but you only have 60 seconds to do it. Start on my mark. Ready, set, go.
finished. Okay, before we go on, we're going to repeat that exercise one more time. So take out a clean sheet of paper and get ready because you still have only 60 seconds to write a one paragraph story. But this time, I want you to write about something specific. You're going to write about a young man who falls into the great cats exhibit at the city zoo. Start your story the moment after he hits the ground as he looks up to see one of the animals coming towards him. Ready, set, go. Okay, pens down. You just wrote two very short stories, possibly only a couple of sentences. The question is, which one was easier? The first one, when I said you could write about anything, or the second one, which was about something specific? Unless you already had an idea in mind when you started the first one, you probably found the second story easier to write. This is because it's much easier to write about something than to write about anything. What I want you to see is a principle of creativity that applies in every field. The principle is this. Boundaries inspire creativity. They don't hinder it. Some people think creativity means lack of boundaries, but the truth is the exact opposite. G.K. Chesterton said the most beautiful part of any picture is the frame. And what he meant was that limitations give definition and shape. He was talking about this principle, that boundaries are your friend as a writer because they bring focus to your imagination. Your mind is kind of like a camera. It will focus much better on something specific than it will on everything at once. So this is what I'm doing in the first few lessons by saying your novel should be based on the heroic quest story type, and that your hero should be someone of about your own age. You'll have to trust me on these initial boundaries. In the long run, your novel will be better for it. To make trust easier, I'm going to explain why I'm giving age limitations to young writers. The biggest reason is that your life experience is limited. It would be very difficult, if not impossible, to write believably from the perspective of someone much older than you. Writing about someone your own age will actually add to the believability of your book because your real life experiences as a teen will carry over into the narration more easily. The cool thing about this is that older readers will be reminded of the perspective they had when they were younger and they'll buy into your story more easily. You'll make them think of things they've forgotten and younger readers will relate to your hero's circumstances and point of view better than if you try to sound like you're older than you really are. In short, everyone who reads your book will be more likely to feel that the narrative voice is honest and real. But creating a character is not just about age and gender. Really, the most important thing at this point is that you write your heroic quest about a person you feel comfortable with, someone whose voice fits you. 